So here we go. Welcome to another Insight Video Town and made another signing. Richard Keogh from Blackpool on a one-year deal on an undisclosed fee as well. I'm joined by Matt Crofton, the man who covers all things Blackpool for the Blackpool Gazette. Thanks for joining me, Matt, first of all. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good for us. Thanks for having me. Um, I wish I wasn't here. I wish I wasn't talking about Richard Keogh's exit, but uh, no, it's, it's good to be with you. Top man, top man. And uh, yeah, it just came out of the blue. Um, you reported it first of all, my friend. Um, what's your thoughts overall? And as you said, you, you wish you weren't here talking about his exit, but he's joined town. What's your thoughts? Yeah, it's an interesting one because, it, it, as you said, it, it did come out of nowhere. But um, I was sort of aware early in the window, uh, Blackpool were linked with, I think it was Michael Morrison, who ended up going to Portsmouth. And there was a suggestion that he, he would have been a direct replacement for Keogh. Um, this was a couple of weeks ago now. So it, it, it had been mentioned that it, it was on the cards, but I wasn't aware of his sort of desire to um, to be closer to his family and, and obviously, obviously his, his, his previous history with Ipswich. I wasn't aware of that. So, I, I, it, you know, it seems like he's sort of been pushing it for himself. He, he, he feels it's a, a big move for him personally at his stage of his career. So I wasn't aware of that until obviously this week, until it, it, the move came up. But, um, yeah, it's a blow for Blackpool. Um, he really, did really well last season. I'm sure we'll get, in, get into that. He did really well last season, so it's a blow. And... I'm sure you've seen that the Blackpool fans are, are pretty um, pretty devastated about it as well because he was a really sort of well liked well liked character around the club. Yeah, I'll get into um, him as a, as a person, and I'm sure you've interviewed him at, at some point during last season. Um, and yeah, as you said, Blackpool fans are disappointed. Um, a 36 year old, um, you think some some fans would go, "Yeah, he's old news now. We don't need a 36 year old at the back." But um, why is that the case in terms of how sad to see him go? Is he did have a great season last year in the championship? You guys, of course, stayed up. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Just, just speaking wider for, for an issue uh, for, for a second, I think it's not just Ipswich or Blackpool, but all fans, when they see the signing a, a 36-year-old, think, oh, that's not particularly exciting, is it? It's, it's not a very sexy signing, is it? We all want a 23-year-old striker or whatever, but a 36-year-old defender doesn't really get you know get you flowing, does it? But to be fair, Blackpool fans had the same sort of reaction at the start of the season. Black fans were a bit confused by it, didn't really... Um, didn't really see what he'd done with. I think it was Huddersfield and MK the season before to suggest that he'd be a good signing. Quite a few people sort of, you know, written him off before he even kicked the ball. Um, and, and he he made a, a probably three three or four games. He struggled a bit to get to grips with the way Neil Critchley wants to play. And Blackpool didn't get off to the best start themselves, which is probably probably the bigger issue. But from that point onwards, he was absolutely faultless and 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 um, struck up a. A really good partnership with Marvin Epiteta, who's sort of their more younger, sort of um, up and coming centre back. I'm sure we'll get onto that later when we're talking about what he can do off the pitch and you know helping players on and off the pitch. Um, yeah, he, he was excellent, and and you know you'd think 36, oh, he's going to have no pace, but or, again, it depends on 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 how you set up and your style of play. If he's been exposed with 20 yards of space behind him for young strikers to get past him, then yeah, there's going to be an issue. But if you set up a team. Um, I, I don't know, it's which defenders, but if you've got a nippy defender next to him um, who can you know, make those recovery runs, that was often the, the system at Blackpool where Marvin Epiteta is, a, as I say, a bit young, he's a tall, fast centre-back. He, he would be the ones making those recovery runs to stop the counter-attacks, stop those balls over the top. Whereas Keo is more about his, his defensive play, his positional play is absolutely spot on. His reading the game is, is excellent. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a reason why he's played. In the championship pretty much all of his career um because because he's a great defender and you know as i said you, you look at it and think he's 36 he's slow you you wouldn't notice it you, you, because he's, he's in the right place at the right time he knows where the ball's going he reads it before the ball's even got there excellent defender um so yeah i think it's a, a good bit good bit of business by um by its switch indeed and um yeah let's talk about him as a player now some town fans will probably know of him. He's been around the block. As you said, he's played most of his time in the championship. Um, I think played against us when he was at MK Dons um, before, of course, going to Huddersfield and then, of course, joining you guys last summer. Um, but as a player as a whole, I know he's now getting to end of his career, um, but we play possession-based football. Uh, we play free at the back. What sort of football has he been playing at Blackpool? Yeah, so Blackpool played a uh, 4-4-2 last season under, under Neil Critchley for the main. He, he was sort of well-known for changing it quite a bit, depending on the opposition, but that was their sort of standard uh, setup. Um, but in terms of, um, you know, it's just playing possession football, that won't be an issue whatsoever for Richard Keogh. He's really come to one possession. Um, as I spoke to your to your colleague Andy uh, yesterday, actually, sort of, you, you'll probably pick on quite 
pick up quite early on that he, he has quite um, a unique style of passing. He, he, he makes sure he gets it to his intended target every single time. Just little things to pick up on. He, he's quite a different technique. I've not seen many um, many defenders uh, adopt, but it's you know it's effective. And I said I can't I can't think of any obvious you know gaffes or errors where he's been caught in possession or or you know given the ball to a, a striker. So yeah, no issues with that whatsoever. Like 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 you said, play for Derby for all those years play good football in the Championship for all, all the clubs. So, yeah, I don't see that being an issue in, in League One. And, uh, of course, Kieran McKenna has come out and said, we've got a lot of young defenders at town and uh, he just wanted, he sees teams who got promoted from League One before and, you know, just t- promotion teams have always got uh, that leader, that that older head in the team. And I saw he, he captained you guys a few times when your captain was, um, the, he was deputy captain. Um, mm. So he's going to bring that in. He's going to bring that leadership. And as you said as well, off field as well, in the dressing room, he's going to be fantastic. Yeah, he's he's a natural natural leader. He, he doesn't. He's one of those who doesn't really need the captain's arm, and it's not an ego thing. But he'll just do it naturally in a way. He, he's obviously because he's thirty six, a bit more of the old school, you know, telling people where to go, constant communication. Um, and I think that's that's probably the biggest thing Blackpool will miss. Not just because he's a good player, but because, as I said, he struck up that partnership with Marvin Epitetta, who's he's twenty six. He's come through non league, so he's still learning. He's done really well, but he's still you know learning the championship. And Kia definitely got the best out of him. He developed more because of Keo, so that's I think the main thing that Paul will miss. Um, I don't think if he'd stayed at Blackpool, he wouldn't have been guaranteed to start. Um, that's one thing I would say with Keo is he did pick up the odd niggle here or there, nothing serious, but the odd groin issue. So obviously he's been out last two weeks with a, with a groin issue after I think it was the friendly at Everton had a groin thing. So every now and then he'll be out for two weeks, come back, be fine. Um, so he, he won't be playing forty games a season. He'll be playing sort of. I don't know if he'd be his first choice, but if he's first choice, probably 20, 25. If, if there's a, a three-game week, you, you won't be playing every game. But um, it's still really useful to have around the place. But as I say, that's probably the biggest thing Blackpool will miss is, I mean, I'd imagine, obviously, we don't sit at the training ground, but we, you could tell from watching the games that he brought on Epiteta so much and he benefited so much. So, um, yeah, that, that on and off the pitch of leadership, that comes naturally to him. And I know um, he, he became very close to Neil Critchley as well and, and he, he sort of, Critchley a couple of times sort of hinted that he relied on him for, for tips and advice on, on, on little things. So, yeah, he definitely got a, a big role to play. <clears throat> so, um, both on and off the pitch. Indeed. And, uh, yeah, in the interview, you know, I was impressed by him. And as you said, even on the pitch, I, you know, sometimes I should see leadership. I saw a nice little video, I think, um, a Blackpool um, Twitter page put out. And she's a nice little interaction with a young yeah. fan and everything like that. Um, I sort of ran off this video, mate. It's been a pleasure having you on. Um, any other business, any other notes you want to mention about Richard Keogh? Um, You know, he's now at the end of his career, but I'm sure he's going to want to tick off an hour promotion on his CV. I think so, yeah. I think um, it'd be interesting what happens, because obviously I watched the interview you mentioned there with the switch, where, as you say, he came across really well. He's always been a good talker. I think you get that with more experienced guys, that they they just be honest. Not like some younger players are a bit more tentative and don't want to give anything away or say anything too much. Kid, very open and honest. We'll, we'll, we'll talk really well. Um, so yeah, I think he'll do well for it. Which um, yeah, I think I think the only, the only negative. It's not really a negative, but it's another thing to look out for. Is he'll get a lot of chance his way for obvious reasons to what happened at the end at Derby. Um, but he dealt with that really well. It didn't seem to affect him. He sort of laughed it off. But uh, yeah, it seemed to be a sort of a weekly occurrence that he'd be sort of the butt of the opposition chance. Um, so yeah, he might have to get used to that with uh, some of the bigger away followings, you know, some of the Chef Wednesdays, all those bigger clubs, whatever. That they all, everyone knows the details of, of what happened with, with Derby. But um, yeah, he seems to, obviously we don't know, but he, he seems to brush it off. He it, 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 it never affects his performance in any way. So again, I don't see that being an issue. Definitely. And um, yeah, he'll come up against Derby this season when Town and Derby play in League One. That'll be an interesting encounter. I'm sure he uh, will want to see his Itchy's Town team uh, win against Derby. Of course, there's going to be a big clash in the division. And of course, um, just to round off really, Matt, um, there's, a, there's a fee involved um, for a 36-year-old with paid a fee. I'm sure it's not going to be a massive fee. What, what do you think it could be? Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't know. Um, so obviously, I, I broke the story and said Blackpool have rejected two bids. So that's the fact it's obviously grown. It's obviously, you know, decent enough for Blackpool to accept it, but I, I don't see it being you know, a, a great big fee, but you, you never know, do you? But no, I, I don't know. But um, I think it's probably a good business for Blackpool to get a fee for a six-year-old. Um, you know, his final year of his contract, anyway, is, is good business. It's just a shame he's leaving full stop, really. But um, yeah, I think it you know allows all parties to move on and uh, hopefully does well for, for you guys this season. 
Indeed. Well, Matt, thank you very much for joining me. Um, yeah, thank you. No worries. That's lovely. And yeah, best of luck this season. Yes, mate. Indeed. To Blackpool as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. And stay tuned for further videos. Bye-bye for now.